Can you hear me? Great. Fantastic. Michael, take it away. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Collabor Online just to, to show you what it is. And then, well, let, let's see. Let's see what we get. So what is it? Well, our wonderful digital sovereign on-premise, uh, powerful WYSIWYG document editing uh, suite. So um, you can see some of the stacked up beauty on the right-hand side there. Um, but allowing you to then view and collaboratively edit on all kinds of documents, pretty much everything that uh, LibreOffice will, will allow you to edit, uh, bring, bringing that into your browser. Uh, great interoperability, um, filters for all sorts of crazy things uh, that you might want to see. And our architecture really is, is a bet, I guess, on CPU threads and networking are getting cheaper. So, you know, we've done a whole lot of work with AMD on Ryzen's, and, you know, our threads are getting cheaper and cheaper, and there are more and more of them, and that's really encouraging. Um, and, we, and we can use those uh, to, to provide a, a, beautiful, a beautiful experience that's consistent everywhere. And of course, the network continues to get faster. So how does it look? Well, we've been doing a whole lot of work on user experience. So these are the, you know, the latest shots uh, showing you, I guess, one UI option. So the UI is heavily configurable, um, but this is something that's familiar to Microsoft Office users. I guess you can see our notebook bar across the top there. That hopefully is a palette of tools people like. There's also a sidebar, which works better on a 16 by nine sort of screen to fit functionality in and give you more space uh, so to see a document. Um, yeah, so you so see obviously word processing, change tracking, uh, beautiful stuff, spreadsheets, you know, all of the, all of the formulae and uh, uh, the core engine that you're, you've come to know and love. And <clears throat> what a powerful core engine it is in terms of, you know, efficiency of representation, threading, uh, performance of, of, of calculation and so on. So some really awesome, uh, spreadsheet stuff behind. I have a drawing application that, that allows you to do, uh, you know, diagramming and drawing and font work and all sorts of um, fun things there. And then presentations as well. Um, one of the interesting things is that, well, one of the unique features here is just being able to edit master pages so that you can actually, you know, create a slide, a slide deck and make it look uh, like you want it to and edit all of the pieces in your slides uh, rather than being kind of locked out of, of changing things in your masters. So, and, and great transition support and so on. And you can see the, the sidebar there is actually, well, this is new, I'll, I'll talk about this in a minute, the, the new stuff in uh, 2111. So we froze this last year, it's now really shipping um, and we'll be shipping a new version, I guess, in, in, a, in a month or two, uh, based on another year of interoperability work under the hood in the LibreOffice technology. But anyway, 2111, so all sorts of good things. So uh, particularly interesting is this uh, right to left support. So if you're uh, Indic or Arabic, uh, Hebrew type uh, language, uh, you know, we can flip your spreadsheet around, your UI around, and hopefully everything feels much more uh, familiar and uh, easy, easy to use and understand. We've done a lot to improve uh, PowerPoint PPTX uh, filter, uh, particularly, and, and various core functionality there for cropping and mirroring images, adding shadows, and, you know, sort of interoperable shadow effects. It's, it's really important that your slides look as you expect them uh, to see, obviously, uh, you know. Um, and match what, what the, uh, the competition had. Uh, so glow effects as well. A multi-column text, uh, so a, a silly feature that, well, I don't know, um, it, it's now there. Um, so you, you don't see uh, broken slides that we're using that. Bottom to top, left to right, vertical for text frames, uh, you know, very, very nice and writer. And there's another key feature here, I guess, which is this um, JS sidebar. So. I mean, it's, it's, really, it's really cool. Um, essentially, instead of rendering the sidebar as pixels, and in fact, this is now true of many dialogues, in, in our latest release, we, we render all of that on the browser side. So this is all done with CSS and theming and styling, and we can make that look really gorgeous. Actually, this is a terribly old a picture of a prototype of this, but perhaps you saw it earlier in, the, uh, uh, in a more polished form in, in, in the screenshots. And this, this brings several Interesting things. Actually, this builds on some work by Red Hat to uh, do GTK theming on Linux. So, uh, you know, so actually on, on Linux, you would be using, you know, native GTK widgets for almost everything in the UI now. And I believe there's some Qt stuff as well. But we essentially convert that to JSON and, and shove it over the wire so that when things change, we send very small deltas and changes. So it's actually, you know, it's quicker, it's more beautiful, uh, and it's, uh, you know, just allows you to theme it and make it look gorgeous. Um, some other features we dumped in recently are uh, anchoring of, of images so you can very precisely affect the layout of your document and get that exactly right. Uh, so that's kind of good. Uh, and you know, there are lots of different anchor modes. Um, and you can see there, again, the palette on the side and some of the good things you can do with images. You know, if you select an image, we can be recoloring it and 
contours, you know, around to change how the, uh, the, the text wraps around it and so on. You know, lots and lots of rich, powerful uh, text layout functionality. Another piece that's new is uh, welcoming, welcoming people to the app so that, you know, when you get there, you can see what's new uh, and you can explore, uh, you know, what, what you should be playing with and looking at and so on. Another thing that's uh, been asked for by some of our larger government uh, customers is an accessibility checker. So this originally was written for the Dutch Standards, uh, Dutch Standards Organization, I believe, the Accessibility Standards Organization. And uh, we've brought that recently to, to online for a German uh, government organization, uh, which, we're, which we're working with um, as part of the, the Phoenix project, actually, which is, is, is an interesting bundle of, of functionality uh, that's shipping in, in German government. Uh, but anyway, perhaps that'll be announced later. Anyway, the, the key is that if you're creating documents and handing them to people, and publishing them online, it's really important that those are nicely accessible for our, our users. And so, you know, it's, it's important then that we can, we can check uh, these things, jump to the issues and, and fix those up so we can produce a beautiful outbound uh, accessible document. Another big thing that we're doing is uh, taking that UI, particularly that sidebar UI there and wrapping that into a single uh, hand mobile uh, UX. So there's some, some pretty cool things there. Um, that are happening. You can see some, some pictures of that. And in our new release, which is coming next week, ah, it should have been this week, but we, you know, anyway, we like to uh, get these things uh, working. Uh, we have this, this cool new functionality here of uh, one-handed uh, context-based quick toolbar. So often you want to use the whole screen of your phone, as you can see on the right-hand side there, um, to see as much of the document as you can. Um, and so we then provide this fast tool palette at the bottom. Uh, for the things that you would most want to do for that. And that's now context sensitive. So it shows obviously different things for text as for uh, images or charts or, or whatever, whatever you're selecting, draw, draw shapes. So that's kind of nice. Um, so in addition to all of these sort of advanced palettes you can access by pressing the properties uh, properties button uh, and you know get a deep dive into the, the whole, whole wealth of, of properties that you have on things, uh, you know, you, you're able to do things quickly as well, um, just with one hand. So one thing I wanted to talk about, and I think it's really important, is, is getting security right and having a good design here. So um, one, of the, uh, one of the interesting things here is, these, uh, uh, is how we uh, contain all of our, our document data there. So in terms of uh, wrapping that up and keeping it safe, uh, LibreOffice is 8 million lines of code. Um, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty tricky to audit that, and we do a huge amount of work. Uh, to test it and, and well, I'll, I'll just go through the, the pieces, but in, inside at the, at the core of what we do, we have that LibreOffice Git rendering. Um, hey, Michael, Hello. something's gone wrong. Oh, uh, we, gone wrong. We've lost your camera and your screen share. Well, that's excessive, it's, excessively exciting. We, uh, let me, we still hear you. Let me Fine, try but, you know, uh, yes. So let's try that. And then oh, at, least, at least I can hear you. Uh, so, so, so that's kind of cool. Okay. Uh, Camera's up. Yep. Let me get rid of that. I'm getting some interesting color uh, issues, so I, I'm going to just um, I'm going to hide my uh, my toolbar and, and do it like this. Uh, it's not not as cool, but um, yeah. Anyway, so can you hear me again? Can you see the picture? Yes. We can hear you. We can see you, but we can't see your screen share. You can't see my screen. Ah, ah, I've lost the button to share it. Oh, hello. You. Let's come back again. Being presenter I, I, somehow. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, yeah, I was I think there might be pixies helping me. Can you see it now? Yes. Perfect. Yes. I'm terribly sorry about that. I suspect someone is clicking a button somewhere. Anyway, here we yeah. go. So the key is uh, to secure this this 8 million lines of C++ in the center. And we do lots of things there. So we have this great K-Verity score uh, that's below the Linux kernel in terms of static checking. Uh, we do load testing. We have a CH root for each document. So we, we stick each document in a container, in its own container, I guess. Uh, we have a very sparse file system in there, um, so there's no shell, there's nothing, well, you know, it's very hard to do anything in there, even if you can break out. And we also filter system calls, because, you know, some system calls, you know, Numa, Rebalance, something or other, have, have, have nothing to do with our software and, and that shouldn't be run. So we, we try and knock out calls that have been historically problematic from a security perspective. Um, and then, of course, you can put that in virtual machines or, you know, but, but I think one of the key things from, from security perspective is you can put that on-premise, so then you can control your own networking, you can control your firewall, your VPNs, you know, you can fully lock this thing down and you can make sure, you know, nothing, nothing leaves your site uh, without you knowing about it. 
So I think that that multi-layer uh, onion there is, is really, really important. And actually, we have another feature that is that is really quite, quite interesting called Secure View. So one of the problems that many businesses have is that they come up with a new product or a new design or something that they want. They want to get feedback on it, right? But it's actually really market sensitive. And you, you don't want your competitors to see it. You don't want them to get wind of what you're doing. Particularly, you don't want them to see exactly what it looks like. So you have an automotive company that... Um, has this problem as a customer, well, actually many other high, highly secure people that, that like like this. And so the question really is, how can you keep you keep the stuff secret and tell people about it so you can get feedback? And the answer really is secure view. I don't know if you can see here this uh, watermark on the screen. It should say, you know, highly confidential and, and so on. Um, and we can put your name into that as well so that you can see these things. You can share those designs and you can get feedback whilst being sure that the document never leaves your server. So, you know, we send, we send pixels, they're all, all watermarked. You know, it would be nice not to even send pixels, of course, but, uh, you know, realistically, uh, it's important that, uh, you know, people can see something on the screen. Otherwise, well, you know, uh, what are you going to do? Now, there's some various other options to try and achieve the similar level of, you know, uh, protection. Uh, so one of these, which is surprisingly popular, uh, our competition did this, is essentially to send the whole document to everyone with even the lowest view access just to send the whole document model to the client. And if you, if you render your documents in the client, you have this problem that you can't render the document unless you have it. Um, so, you know, F12, you know, can defeat whatever silly policy enforcement or watermarking or, or uh, stuff that's put on the top. And, uh, you know, of course, then Microsoft's approach, which is much more rigorous, um, you know, so they encrypt the documents. Uh, so they send encrypted uh, documents everywhere. They send their, you know, AES keys or whatever to the Azure cloud. Um, and, and before those will be handed out to your offer operating system, um, policy will be enforced and checked. So, you know, everything is signed from the bottom up and we check that we've got the very latest Microsoft Office that will enforce that policy of not allowing copy and paste or not allowing print or save as or, you know, this sort of thing. <clears throat> and so this works. It's a model that works. The only problem with it, of course, is that you have this massive single point of failure. You put all of the doc document keys for your documents into the Azure cloud and, you know, and then, then Microsoft has to sign everything from the bottom up. Um, so not, not cool, I, I would argue this way. And so our approach, which then allows you to uh, federate and collaborate uh, with other people uh, whilst ensuring the document doesn't leave your premise is just really, you know, ah, so much more beautiful. Open standards, you know, clean browsers, uh, just a little web socket protocol. And uh, you still get that, that ultra, ultra secure, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. My Thunderbird is, uh, is, is plaguing me. Um, ultra secure view. So one of the things I'm encouraged about, and I just, just look, at, look at some education references here. I, I told you I would uh, uh, point out some other people using Collabor Online uh, left and right with, with some of our partners. Because Collabor Online really doesn't work well by itself. It has to be integrated into an own cloud, next cloud, body OC file, eGroupware, um, high drive, or, or something else that does the storage and authentication for us. I just look at education here because education is interesting. Microsoft gives very low prices or, or free, you know, Google provides, you know, rel relatively free services, although free is really, I guess, supported by some, uh, you know, uh, large market dominance in some other sphere. Um, so it's really encouraging to see lots of educational institutions actually deploying this, you know, 66,000 users here uh, growing quickly, uh, SurfNet, um, the French, French public sector here, um, healthcare and public sector, lots, lots of things there, but you know, some, some schools examples, uh, you know, coming up to 33,000 pupils there and you know, do, doing great stuff. Uh, Lille, 67,000. So, so lots of people around, around the place using, uh, using Collabor Online very actively. And we'd love to have you work with us and make it all better for all of those, those people. So how do you get involved? Well, this is of course the million dollar question. So all of the code is open source. You can go and grab it there uh, and compile it for yourself, either for uh, Android or iOS um, or Chrome OS, of course, we run on as well uh, using the Android, the Android version. Um, but there's all sorts of community resources there. Uh, we have um, actually meetings uh, weekly. You can find out all of the minutes in the forum. Everyone's welcome to come uh, get involved, uh, development, ask questions. And it's actually really encouraging to see a number of people in the community, Andreas Kynes, Rismat, various others doing, doing design and user experience and, and tweaking and making, making it more and more beautiful. Um, you can help 
with websites. Uh, there's lots of SDK examples. So if you're interested in taking this and embedding it into your tool, maybe maybe you just want some thumbnailing of, of, of documents so you can get pretty, pretty images. And Calabra Online provides a really simple way to deploy that uh, and a, a really smooth, yeah, there's, there's almost no dependencies for Calabra Online I mean, apart from the, the LibreOffice kit or Calabra Office uh, underneath it, which, which we bundle uh, into Docker images for you. So yeah, yeah. And actually one of the even more fun things that we have is, is this tool called Gitpod, which is fantastic. Um, so Gitpod allows you to, just in your browser, uh, without setting up a development environment, without having to do anything uh, horrible, you can, you can load the code in Gitpod and you can be just at the point where it's all pre-built, it's all ready, you can follow the steps, you can change something and you can see your change uh, very, very quickly without needing you know, a large build tree or, or lots of effort uh, to do that. So, so hopefully the barrier to entry there is, is, is really, really low. And you know you can you can play with it you know in, in in these various harnesses. There's all sorts of things that we can do to configure the UI, hiding menus and toolbars and changing things and uh, fiddling around, adding our own pieces to it uh, that that makes it you know very simple. And, and to write an integration, this wapi like protocol, it's just a put. It's just a get. We you know we download uh, the document from your URL and it just comes off a web server, and then we do a post to uh, send it back again. I mean, that's that's pretty much it. There's there's one more get which we do which gives like your username and whether you have access to the file and you know this kind of thing, avatar links, uh, the permissions that you have and so on. But it's kind of trivial. And, and that, that just comes back, I believe, in a J JSON blob um, that, that shows what you can and can't do. So really it's just three methods to, to make it work. It's really easy, have a, ha have a play. And there you are, and you get all of this good stuff. Of course, the, the mobile piece there is really just reusing the existing mobile UI, our responsive UI for the collaborative editor um, actually natively on the device. So uh, we'll run the, the server and the client, uh, both in those, uh, both on the same device. So you can work offline, which is kind of cool. And if you're looking at a really full feature office suite on a tablet, for example, you know, we, uh, your tablet can behave almost essentially like the desktop app if you like that. Obviously it has a, a better touch, a touch interface, but uh, you know, you can plug a keyboard in and, and I mean, you have the full application there. Um, and of course it can behave like a mobile phone as well, if you, if you like that. So. It's, it's very, very powerful. So, well, what can I say? Here we are. Uh, secure, of course, uh, and private, so you can control it. Uh, open source, inevitably. Uh, it's pretty, uh, which is, well, important. And, and we're making it incrementally prettier. I think that's the other thing. We'd love your help with that. Perhaps you saw something that annoyed you, you know, a pixel you wanted to move today. And, you know, you can get involved and do that. Submit a, you know, change to the CSS or, you know, get involved in some JavaScript there. Um, it's improving very rapidly. We're doing a huge amount of work and much more to come. I'll, I'll say a little bit about what we're working on now. And, you know, we have that LibreOffice technology underneath it that's, that's awesome too. So, I mean, let me encourage you to contribute there. I think, you know, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff happening in LibreOffice and, uh, you know, good to get involved in the code. Um, and it's, it's really easy to get involved and make a difference. We'd love to, love to have you there. Um, and, of course, that's the community side, the product side, but, but really taking back control of your data is, is I think, probably a moral imperative. Uh, you know, we have an interesting convergence in Europe, and it was really interesting to hear the talk, talk before um, about, you know, data traps and, and, well, digital sovereignty is the positive framing, but the data trap is the negative one. And so we see, you know, just MI6 in the UK, which is our spy agency, talking about, you know, the dangers of surrendering all of your data and this data trap that we can't, can't accept, losing our sovereignty as a country. And uh, but then, you know, you also see the, the pirate party on the other 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 side, European Union, uh, talking about the importance of digital sovereignty. And they're basically all singing from the same hymn sheet. So my hope is this is an idea whose time has well come. And uh, yeah, so you so get get out there, get at the head of the curve, uh, deploy it and, and see, see what you can uh, get. And there's this really unique view uh, feature there with Secure View. I think that, that's great. Not just unique that you can have it on premise, control it and be confident uh, in it but also that you can then share and collaborate and you can federate that with other people's instances. Uh, and, and that's a really useful business tool to be able to share, you know, secret information, get feedback, interaction, and so on. Um, we're very widely deployed, 80 plus million Docker image downloads, uh, you know, millions of paying users out there. Um, we're, we're thrilled to be able to turn your support as customers into new feature function and, and great new open source. So thank you very much. And that's